Hello, I'm Penny Vincenzi and it's really nice to be able to talk to you like this. And what I really want to talk to you about is my new book. It's called The Decision, it's published in September and I'm really excited about it and I do hope you're going to like it. And I think the best way I can tell you about it and what it's about is to read from the prologue of the whole book. So, here we go. It was nearly over then, Eliza reflected. By this time tomorrow it would be settled. By this time tomorrow she would know whether she would still be a mother, a proper mother, the sort that did the ordinary things, got her child up every morning and tucked her up in bed every night, took her to school and picked her up again, got cross with her, argued with her, told her off for skimping her homework or her piano practice, insisted she made her bed, and tidied her room and wrote thank you letters and cleaned out the hamster's cage or the other sort the once or even twice a week sort the provider of a perfect room and whatever you fancy food who waited impatiently outside school aware of the mild curiosity of the other mothers the purveyor of treats and outings and extra generosity to friends always with time to give, overindulgent, never cross, never critical, desperate to know about a school concert, a ballet exam, plans for a holiday, watchful for new loyalties, jealous of new traditions. Which would she be? The mother with custody of her child or the mother without? So there you have it. The decision is the story of a custody battle and a divorce at the end of a stormy and passionate marriage, ending with the battle in the high courts for a little girl. It's set in the 60s um, in, in the fashion industry against a background of glossy magazines. Um, Eliza, the heroine, is the fashion editor and all the glamour and drama of that world, the photographic sessions, the best dress lists, parties, fun, glamour, Paris collections, everything. And the very different one of the property industry where Matt, the hero, becomes a self-made millionaire. So, lots of drama, lots of intrigue, lots of passion, lots of glamour. And I do hope you like it. So, let's have another reading and this time it's to the wedding. And is it quite the glamorous affair that Eliza who was one of the Debs of her year, one of the last to be presented to the Queen, and her millionaire boyfriend might have expected. God, she felt terrible. She really felt she might throw up there and then, all over the registrar's table. The registrar's table, in Chelsea Town Hall, not the altar in Wellesley Village Church. Are you all right, Elizabeth? The registrar was looking at her anxiously, kindly. He did seem very kind, the registrar. The registrar, not the vicar, not dear old Reverend Williams, who had married her parents and christened her and Charles and confirmed them both as well, but the registrar at Chelsea Town Hall. She nodded, looked down and saw her shoes her white pumps with those wonderful red bows on that echoed the red bows on her dress, her short lace dress. Not a long full skirted satin dress, a very short white lace dress with red bows all the way down the front. The ceremony continued, they made their vows, were declared man and wife and exchanged a kiss. She felt better now, turned and smiled into the room at their friends. Not a church full, just a couple of rows and only a handful of family, mostly his. They signed the register, stood up, walked out of the room. Out of the room, not down the aisle, not into the church porch, but the registry office lobby. And then outside onto the steps, not into a laughing, loving crowd, but a couple of half-interested passers-by. What had happened to her? 
What would happen to her? And how could she possibly be so shockingly, wonderfully happy? There are other characters in the story, of course. Matt's sister, Scarlet, independent, glamorous air hostess, conducting a doomed love affair of her own. Louise, his assistant, bright and sassy and ferociously ambitious. Mariella, the Italian beauty with her extraordinarily privileged life. And Jeremy, Eliza's too-good-to-be-true millionaire boyfriend. All of them are caught up in the end in the story of Matt and Eliza and the fate of their little daughter, Emmy. And here's another excerpt. It was over, that bit at least. The whole thing seemed like a dream now, walking with her solicitor into that vast Victorian Gothic building with its great wrought iron gates that she had seen a hundred times on the news and in corny old films. She followed Philip, her solicitor, into the huge cathedral-like atrium with alcoves on either side where people huddled, having clearly urgent conferences, and barristers, berobed and bewigged, strode about looking important. Nobody seemed to be smiling. It was all totally, what? Terrifying. That was about it. A glass-fronted, double-sided notice board stood just outside the cathedral entrance, the details of the day's cases, and there it was, pinned up. Court number 31, Mr Justice Harris, Shaw versus Shaw. That was her. And how had that happened, that her marriage, her really rather amazing marriage, entered into with such happiness and love and hope, was become Shaw versus Shaw? and sent into court number 31 to be dismembered by Mr Justice Harris. She felt her eyes fill. God, she must stop crying all the time. How does it all end? Who does get custody of Emmy? And what happens to Eliza after that? You'll have to read the decision and find out for yourself. And I do hope you like it.